Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, to the viewing and listening audience. It's now 5 p.m. and I warmly welcome you to this free and virtual agricultural training webinar, volume eight on hydroponics versus drip irrigation. It is organized by the Public Service Credit Union and Cooperative Society. And today we will be, be getting some um, practical know-how um, using some videos as we did last time. My name is Michelle Shah, I'm Chief Agricultural Engineer with 27 years technical experience and, and engineering solutions. During these unprecedented times caused by COVID-19, we, the members of PSCU, are doubling our efforts to engage the members of PSCU and engage the members of the public by harnessing digital technologies to bring training and development capacity initiatives to a much wider listening and viewing audience and to benefit from training opportunities such as this one. The house rules um, hold as usual and it is as follows. The training session is divided in two parts and there will be a five minute intermission halfway through the presentation. You may keep videos on and the administrator will have the participants muted however. During the presentation, questions may be asked by raise of hand located at the bottom of the screen or by the Q&A box. And the, the administrator will inform me when questions are asked and we will I will answer at that point in time. You can send further questions after the, the presentation via email at michelle.shard at pscu.com bscutt.com as it appears on the contact slide at the end. At the end of the presentation, you will also have a few survey questions to answer, which will come up after the webinar. I encourage all of you to take full advantage of this training material, which is being made available to you and which is, will be of practical use for you in the future. Sessions will, will be recorded and, it, and will be posted on the PSCU website in, um, in due course. Once again, welcome again, and I look forward to seeing you again in, many, in, in the other sessions to come. And remember, participants will also be receiving certificates at the end via emails. So let, let us now start. I'll... So our topic is hydroponics and also drip irrigation, which will be done in the second half. So the, there are various types of hydroponics. There are at, at least seven types, which I will talk about today. And the, those types are wick system, deep water culture, nutrient film technique or NFT, urban flow, which is a flood and drain system. And that is also known as the um, Dutch bucket system. It's also a, a variety of the urban flow. Then we have aeroponics, drip system, and crack key method. So let us now see, these are just some sketches of the various types, which I'll go into further as we go along. So the, the, these are the seven types, as I mentioned. And the first three types are, are basically an air and water separated system. And we have the N NFT Kratky ebb and flow method, which is, is um, a method where the, the air and the water is separated um, via the, where the, the roots are, are um, located in the water. Parts of, only part of the root is, is in, in the water system. In the other four methods, the air and water are mixed in that case. So the entire root system is is um, totally um, totally um, located in the water system. So the, wa the water has to be agitated to get oxygen into the water. So we have four types, water culture, aer aeroponics, drip, and wicking system. The, the first deep water system, we have to use um, uh, uh, pump an air pump to get these bubbles in, into the water, or air bubbles. So we will look at all seven types in this presentation. 
the definition of hydroponics. Hydroponics is the term used to describe crop production systems in which plants are grown without soil. Hydroponic systems is a method of growing plants in soilless solutions. And it can, the hydroponics can be any nutrient solution or inert, inert growing media, such as perlite and sand or sharp sand, um, anything other than the traditional potting mixes or soil. Hydroponic gardening involves growing plants in water and nutrient solution without the soil. So, the, so we have two, two types, the water-based type and the media-based type. So the media-based type, we use, um, for instance, perlite or sand, which I, you can see in the picture on the side. Perlite is the white material, sand is this light brown material, and even sharp sand is a very popular uh, material used when it's not the water-based type. And gravel is another media which can be used. We use cocoa peat, that's a very popular one as well. So let's look at further things, the materials and tools now, tools, equipment used in hydroponics. We have this perlite, which I mentioned. We have cocoa coir, that is a material, you know, made of the, the, the dried coconut and it's, um, the hydro, hydroton balls, those are some pebbles which are put into the, this um, netted cup because the netted cup is what holds the plant. So this, these hydro, hydroton balls are placed after the plant is placed into the, the netted cup so that it will up, hold the, the, the plant in place. And some of the equipment we have here, we see this equipment in the bucket is to determine the um, pH as well as the electrical conducti conductivity and temperature of the water. This, this measuring meter here, this takes that measurement. And we have the tools now, such as the drills. We have the bar clamps that, that is for holding the the, the actual PVC pipes in place while you're constructing the, the, um, the, the, the system. So the bar clamps holds the PVC so you can um, make do the various um, drilling and sewing of the pipes. This is the jigsaw or hand saw that is used for cutting the PVC pipes. Right, so benefits of hydroponics. The benefits are reduced transplanting shock, Minimal soil-borne pest and disease, so you don't you don't get as much pest and disease because it is soilless. Um, we have easier weed control, so we actually have no weeds because the, the weeds occurred um, in the soil soil medium, so there are no weeds. Um, the reduced labor requirements, closer spacing of plants are possible. So with the closer spacing, you get a, a more dense population of planting material. So it's you get a higher quantity of plants. Crops can be harvested earlier in a matter of weeks, say um, three to six weeks. Um, yields are higher, um, improved shelf life of produce and crops are grown in infertile areas. They, so they, they, it is above ground and it can be grown any area that you wish, indoors or outdoors. So let us just look at the types of hydroponics in this video so that um, you'll have a better idea, a short, very short video, so you'll have a better idea of the various types. Hydroponics. Plants grown hydroponically are not planted in conventional soil, unlike so many other agricultural crops. Instead, the roots are submerged in an inorganic growing medium. Nutrient-rich water is then applied to the roots of the plant. This is the basis for any hydroponic setup. You might be thinking how a plant can survive, and even thrive, without soil. To understand how hydroponically grown plants develop and mature, you need to understand the purpose that soil serves in supporting the life of a plant. One of the most important functions of soil is its ability to retain water and nutrients and supply these to the roots of the plant. In hydroponics, this need is overcome by placing the plant in an inorganic growing medium, like vermiculite, perlite, rock wool or an expanded clay substrate. Alternatively, the plants can also be placed in a simple container without any substrate or float on the water itself. 
the nutrient demands of the plants are then met through regular applications of a nutrient solution to the root zone of the plant. A beginner can get easily confused and overwhelmed with all the variations of the hydroponic method. So, let's take a look at the different hydroponic applications that you can try out. 1. The Nutrient Film Technique In this setup, plants are placed in sloping hollow pipes or channels. Nutrified water is continuously pumped through the channels over the root system. There is no need for additional growing medium like vermiculite or rockwool. The NFT is a closed system that recirculates water throughout the channels by pumping it first to the upper or higher ends of the channels that then flows down the slope. 2. Wick Systems This is one of the simplest hydroponic setups and is perfect for beginners. A reservoir of nutrient-enriched water is placed underneath the plants. There is a wick that extends from the growing medium downwards into the reservoir. The water moves through capillary action from the reservoir into the growing medium and keeps the roots nourished and moist. Little specialist equipment is needed for this design and it is very easy to DIY with some buckets, rope and a drill. 3. Ebb and Flow Also known as the flood and drain system, plants embedded in a growing medium are placed over a reservoir filled with nutrient water. A pump periodically forces the water up into the section housing the plants. The pump is then turned off and the water gradually flows back into the reservoir. This is another simple technique and apart from the pump and piping, little expert equipment is required for success. 4. Deep Water Culture Here, plants are placed in pots with growing media or lightweight covers that float on the water's surface. The plant's roots then grow into the water. A pump oxygenates the water to keep the roots healthy, but apart from that, no other mechanization is required. This makes the deep water culture system great for beginners or DIY projects. 5. Drip Systems This technique makes use of drip lines and a pump that transports water from an underlying reservoir into the growing media encasing the plants above. Usually, a dripper will be allocated to each plant which allows for the fine-tuning of nutrient concentrations and watering intensity. The water can be recycled, which saves time and money, or it can be siphoned out the system, which maintains the optimal nutrient concentrations in the reservoir. 6. Aeroponics Here, plants are suspended in the air vertically or horizontally. A pump then delivers a misting of nutrient media to the roots of the plants at scheduled intervals or on a continuous basis, depending on the needs of the plant. This is a more advanced system requiring pumps, misters and timers, among other equipment and should only be considered by expert growers to make the investment worthwhile. No matter the type of hydroponics system you decide on, you will always have to consider the advantages and disadvantages before you start your production. Let's start with the positives of growing plants hydroponically. Firstly, you can set up a hydroponic operation, big or small, almost anywhere. Because no soil is needed, you can grow a considerable number of plants indoors even. You can maximize your yield because the roots of hydroponically grown plants are kept compact. This is possible because when they are provided with the perfect amount of water and nutrients, roots do not need to grow in search of more. You will also be free from the constraints of poor soil conditions and environmental pollutants, allowing you to grow almost any herb or leafy vegetable anywhere. The money saved on water and nutrient inputs is another advantage offered to hydroponic growers. In conventional agriculture, most of the water and nutrients applied to the plants is lost through drainage, runoff, and evaporation. In hydroponics, this problem is overcome by applying only the exact amount of water and nutrients needed by the plants. The savings are further improved in circulatory hydroponics systems, as the same water is pumped through the system over and over again. Hydroponic systems also allow you to overcome the constraints imposed by a change of season. Climate-controlled systems allow the grower to fine-tune the temperature and lighting to suit the needs of their plants. This can open up the possibility of producing crops in their off-season, which can ensure you receive a premium for your harvest and limit the need for expensive and polluting international air freight. The climate control also means that plants grow faster. Because you can alter the environmental conditions as needed, the plants can always be provided with the optimal conditions for growth. The lack of soil will also eliminate any soil-borne diseases or weed infestations. If this problem is solved, then the money spent on the usual control methods will no longer be required. The labor and time spent mitigating pest and weed problems will also be removed. These savings can either be reinvested into expanding production, or it will result in improved profit margins. 
Furthermore, the plants will be less susceptible to soil-borne pathogens and will not need to compete with weeds for water or nutrients. Lastly, you will be able to change crops or cultivars easily and quickly if market demand fluctuates away from or towards certain products. You will therefore be able to keep up to date with consumer trends and meet demands as they arise. It is easy to see why hydroponics is a favorite among commercial growers and hobbyists alike. However, there are some obstacles that every grower needs to consider before they start. While a small, backyard setup may not be too costly, the startup costs of a commercial hydroponics operation will be expensive. You will therefore need to make sure that you have a solid business plan and contingencies in case of unforeseen obstacles. This may be a barrier for small-scale farmers who cannot afford the initial investment or be approved for the necessary loans. Relating to the expenses of setting up a hydroponic production, you will need the expertise and experience required to make a commercial setup a success. You do not want to waste money on mistakes and mishaps that could have been easily prevented with the correct experience. This is less of an issue for hobbyists, as making mistakes and learning from them is all a part of the hydroponics experience. Lastly, and this is especially so for large, electric-powered systems, the risk posed by power and water outages is a big one. Because the roots of the plants are not anchored in water-retaining soil, prolonged periods without water or nutrient applications will be devastating and result in large-scale losses. It is therefore wise to invest in generators and boreholes if you are a commercial grower. In conclusion, there are so many benefits of growing your plants hydroponically. If you are interested in starting a backyard, small-scale operation then do not hesitate. However, if you are looking to go big or expand your production, more time and thought will be needed in developing a business strategy, a budget and contingency plan before you take that leap. Thank you to everyone who has made it to the end of the video, we hope you learned Okay, so we, we saw all the various types and um, the, the way it is um, set up. So let us look a bit at the, the theory behind it. Uh, um, we have the three most popular types uh, here being the new and NFT, the ebb and flow or the drain, um, the, the drain and uh, drain system technique and the hydroponic um, wick technique. So we see in the diagrams with the nutrient film technique, you, you have the PVC at a slant and, and you have the pumps, which the pump, which is transferring oxygen and it, which is transferring the nutrients from the tank to the, to the PVC pipe. And the, the, this, it's, it's supposed, the, the pipe supposed to have a small amount of water, just co only covering part of the, the roots and the roots will uptake the nutrients and then the, the water then flows back out of the PVC back into the tank and the water is agitated with an air pump and an air stone to provide oxygen in, in the water. So we have the ebb and flow, which is um, submerged then drain nutrient water. So we have again a water pump so we have the same system of nutrients going to the PVC pipe, but in this case, the, the PVC is horizontal and not at an angle. So the, the, the parts of the, the root is submerged in the water again, and it, it, the, water, the water from the PVC exits again it back into the reservoir. In this case, we don't have any agitation of, with um, air pumps of, of oxygen in the tank. So it's just a, one pump in this case. So the and third system, the wick, wick system, we have an air pump which provides oxygen to the tank, and we don't have any pump to, to carry the, the nutrient water to the thing to the to the um to the container or the which holds the plant, and the wick that is coming from the container to the to the reservoir that is what will transport all the nutrients from the the reservoir to the, the, the container holding the plant. So in this system with the WIC now, we can actually have um, growing media such as sand or, and, um, or, or rock wool, and that medium will hold the plant in place. And that when we, the, the WIC, which is, which is, um, placed between the, the container and the, the reservoir that that trans, that is a trans, that will um, transport water to and from the, the system. 
So these are the three most popular types and NFT is done a lot in Trinidad at this point. Um, these are some of the pros and cons of the various types. The, the big system, as I just explained, is, is a very affordable type with low maintenance and there's no pump, as I mentioned. And the disadvantages, uh, it, is, is, it has slower growth rates. It is prone to alga, algae growth and there are no nutrient recirculation in this one. The deep water culture system, um, we have the advantages where it is simple to set up, no nutrient pump is required. So it only has the air pump to, to provide oxygen into the in, the in the reservoir. So it is the cheapest of the active systems. The disadvantage of the deep water culture is that it is it has slower growth rates and you must frequently refill the, the, the reservoir tank. So you have to continuously fill the reservoir tank to have constant um, high levels of water in the tank. The third type, ebb and flow, we have the advantage of it being aff affordable and it's low maintenance and excess nutrient solution recirculates in the ebb and flow. In this system, we have a, a pump and a timer. The disadvantage is that it is prone to algae growth and it, has, um, it may have technical malfunctions which result in crop loss. The fourth type, drip method, the advantage is excess nutrient solution recirculates and it there's sufficient oxygen flow. As we have the oxygen pump that, that provides the, the, the um, oxygen. The disadvantage of the drip method though is it, it requires regular cleaning and it is prone to algae growth as well as clogging. So the clogging occurs because with the drip method, you have to have drip lines. And when if these fine, thin, narrow drip lines are clogged with, with any algae, um, you will, you would, it, that would prevent water from dripping into the, um, the, the plant medium. The, four, the fifth type is the nutrient film technique, NFT. And this is a very popular method in Trinidad being used. Um, the excess nutrient solution recirculates. It, it, it has a plentiful oxygen flow and space is efficient for the growth of the plant. So the, we can space the plants along the tray and you can have it dense, densely spaced because it, it, they can be very close. And you have both um, the, an air pump as well as a water pump, where, which will provide the nutrients to the, to the pipe. The disadvantage to NFT method though is it's prone to clogging it's, and it has technical malfunctions which could result. So the, the, the clogging occurs because we have the, the, um, the PVC pipe at an angle and if, if there are any, uh, um, it is a very thin layer of water that is only touching the base of the roots. And uh, the, the, the clogging may occur when, when there's um, a buildup of any algae in this thin film of water that is in the pipe. The, the last one, the aeroponic system. The advantage with this is, um, we have excess nutrient solution that recirculates and there's a plentiful oxygen flow and space is efficient. And we have maximum nutrient absorption in this case. Because with this system, there's a mist that it sprays on the surface of the plant and you get absorption in, in the plant through this mist. The disadvantage is we have again clogging occurring because of the 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 um the, the nozzles that provide the mist the, the, that could become clogged so you won't get the mist coming um being produced. Then we have 
time in, is intensive for this because you have to leave it for a longer period of time to, to get the area, the, the mist to provide um, nutrients to the plant. Um, it is a high tech, it is more advanced than the other methods and it is poorly suited to thick organic based nutrients and additives. So the, the, it is not always suitable to all the, the, the types of um, organic based nutrients. It's not really suited to all the types. So we, we, uh, we saw the basic advantages and disadvantages in this. The materials on the, 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 um, that are used when we set in up hydroponic systems, we usually have a 50 gallon nutrient tank. We have PVC pipes, plastic tubings, expand, expanded clay pebbles, uh, water, of course, and planting cups or, or the, the net cups, which we call them. We have stands made of PVC pipe, fertilizers for the system, and pumps and plants. The pumps, we have both, both the water pumps and the air pumps. These are the various parts of the PVC that are used in setting up the system. So for, if, the, these will give you the exact names of the different parts if you're not familiar. And, and these are the names you would go to when you purchase in the parts. So the tools now in the hydroponics, the tools we use are, well, we have buckets being used. Um, we have basins like these types. This is like the, the um, this is like the, the, five, the, the five gallon basin here. This one, they have hoses, garden hoses, because that is what's used for filling the reservoirs or the basin. And we have systems like the, um, PA, the equipment, like the pH meter. This is what a pH meter would look like. And the, the pH and the part per million testing kits, those are sold at um, farm, um, agro shops, pH buffer solutions as well. So we see the certain tools and buckets used for the system. We, when we are setting up systems, the first mm -hmm. thing we have to determine is a location for, for setting up the system. We must locate the system in an enclosed structure, such as a shade house or on an outdoor patio. The floor should be level to ensure even coverage of water and nutrients to plants in the system. If placing the system outdoors, protect the system from elements such as providing a wind barrier and check the water levels more often due to water loss from evaporation. If placing the system in indoors in an interior room of the house, add grow lights to provide supplemental lighting to the plants. It is also um, noted that um, LED lights are the most suitable lights because they, they, are com they, they are compatible with the ultraviolet lights from the sun. So we, we know, know that LED lights uh, are the most um, recommended type of, of, the, of lights, not, not mm -hmm. the, the fluorescent or the incandescent, but the LED LED lights, mm -hmm. they, are very, they are compatible with ultraviolet from the sun. The wick system, let us look at what the, the, uh, the um, necessities for the wick system. It is, it's a simple, very simple type of system. We, we use cloth strips or cotton ropes um, to be used as the wicks to draw out nutrient solution from the reservoir under the plants and to feed them with in the main, main container. This method doesn't require much moving parts and the wicks naturally absorb water on their own. However, larger plants or plants that require more water may soak up more nutrients than the wicks can provide. So it's, it's more, more suitable to the smaller plants. This is a, a diagram showing how the wick system is. And in the wicking system, the basic type of hydro system you can build, it, it, is, it, it can be used for thousands, it has been used over the years, and uh, it's um, it's known as a passive hydroponic system, meaning that you don't need any air pumps or water pumps to use it. Nutrients and water mm. are moved into the root zone via a wick, which is often something as simple as a rope or felt. 
The key success with this Wiccan hydroponic system is to use growing media that tr transports water and nutrients well. The good choices are coconut core, perlite, or vermiculite. So those media are placed in the net cup as shown in the diagram. And the wick system are good for smaller plants that don't use up a lot of water and nutrients, right? Now let's look at the deep water culture system. Well, we see a reservoir that is filled to the brim with, with water. And we usually have styrotex being placed at its, to float on this water with, with the net cups placed in holes in the styrotex. So in the deep water culture system, you need five gallon rectangular buckets to use as a reservoir to submerge the roots in. And usually there's a styrofoam platform floating on the top to hold the plants in the net basket. The deep water culture system, it entails the um, constant supply of water, oxygen and nutrients. Then you use an air pump that will supply the oxygen. And, as a, and the reservoir method is by far the easiest method for growing plants in hydroponics. It's deep water system. The plant roots are suspended in nutrient solution. And, an, and a regular aquarium pump can be used to supply the oxygen. And to prevent light from penetrating in, into the system, you can use, you, um, as this could cause algae to grow, um, the, 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 it is necessary to use the um, buckets that are dark in color so that you don't get the, the algae being um, produced, you know, because this is the, the sunlight that enters into the, the reservoir water that will produce the algae. So we have to use dark containers and even the, the covering with the styrotex as it is opaque and opaque in color. So you don't get any sunlight entering the, the, the reservoir water that will cause algae to grow. So it's, it is an excellent choice for organic hydroponics as hydroponics that use organic nutrients are more prone to clog, clogging. Right, so it is good for organic hydroponics. So let us look at a short video on what the deep water culture system is about. Let us now look at that. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Miller. I'll be showing you guys how to build a simple hydroponic system today. So step one, you're going to need a reservoir. Now anything from 10 to 20 gallons of water is what you're going to need. Now in here is what you'll put the nutrient solution in. Now the nutrient solution will need an EC of about 1.5 to 2.5 and that'll be best for plant growth. Generally depending on the species it'll vary. A little bit of research, you can find which one is best you're going to want to replace the solution weekly in order to maintain the electrical conductivity, which is basically how many or how much nutrients and minerals are in there, as well as the pH. Now, after you have the selected uh, nutrient solution, you're going to need a fountain pump. Now, this is a 15 gallon per hour fountain pump. It's just for aquariums. Depending on how much water you want it moving, it's going to be continuously recirculating, so make sure it's uh, submerged. You're going to need to check what the outside diameter of the little connection is. Then you're going to want uh, the correct tubing for it. The outer dimensions of this one is about a quarter of an inch. So I found a couple feet of quarter inch tubing. You're going to want to cut a five to six inch length of this and just put it on there. You want it so that when the, it needs to be long enough that the fountain pump is completely submerged while it is directing water up to the upper layer. Now, this is what, this is the tray that the plants will sit in. Now, you'll see that I have two holes, one at the inlet and one at the outlet. Now, one of these holes, you're going to have the tubing that you just cut, pop it into there, just slide it in. I used a simple drill bit to get these holes in. Even if they're a little bit small, that's probably for the best because you want it to fit snugly. If it's not snug, then 
likely the tubing will fall out from the force of the water and you'll just, your plants will die because they dry out. So after you connect that, you fit it in here. Make sure that the inner dimensions fit in the container and then the lip fell right over it so it holds. So now that we have everything put together, you can put the plants in here. For a beginner, lettuce is a good option. Uh, you could also do spinach. What I found is lettuce uh, germinates really well. The whole thing will grow and I can get a full lettuce plant in about 30 days. What you're going to grow the plants in for hydroponics is a little rock wool cube. Now, rock wool cube is made of an, an inert compound. It's a nice media for hydroponic growth because you can just put the seed in the top and this, it'll sprout in however long it takes to germinate. An alternative to rock wool is coconut core. That's biodegradable and you might, but this is not. So I guess it depends on preference. Before seeding, make sure to soak the rock wool cubes so that they're very well moistened and everything. And then you can plant the seeds in there. The seeds will then absorb the water and germinate that way. You're gonna make, wanna make sure that the rock wool cubes are always moist. And when each of these seeds grow, germinates and grows to about two inches, that's, when it, that's about a good time to transplant into the hydroponic system. So as you can see, I have separated rock wool cubes right here. You're going to wanna to place it into a net cup. You put the seedling inside of here and these little net cups are useful because they let the water flow over, they hit the roots, and the roots are able to easily grow through the net cup. Now what I generally do is I have a styrofoam sheet that I cut out holes with the various number of plants that I want. So right now I have six plants. This is optimal for uh, lettuce or different leafy greens. And I just have holes cut out for the desired net cup size. And then you can take your seedling in your net cup and place it directly into here. And then I can start up the pump and everything recirculates nicely. You're going to want to keep it in a well-lit area. Make sure that it gets 10 to 11 hours of well, uh, in a well-lit window somewhere in your house. You're going to want to keep the whole system in a warm environment. As long as it's above 60 degrees Fahrenheit, then your plants will be happy and healthy. And there you have it, a simple hydroponic system. Okay, so we saw a short demonstration of the deep water culture system. Now let's look at the nutrient film technique. The nutrient film technique is slightly more complicated and not recommended for beginners, but from, from the reservoir, the nutrient solution is pumped into the main tray to flow through the plant roots. Unlike the deep water culture, the roots are more exposed to air than submerged in water. After the nutrient solution passes through all the plants, it, is then, it then drains back into the reservoir below, and this helps prevent the roots from drowning by too much water intake. The nutrient film technique, known as NFT, is, is very popular, and several plants are grown in channels that have nutrient solution pumping through them and constantly running along the bottom of the channel. When the solution reaches the end of the channel, the tr it returns to the main reservoir and is sent back, back to the beginning of the system again. This makes a, re a recirculating system, just like in the deep water culture system. And the NFT is a type of system where continuous flow of nutrient solution runs over the roots, the plant roots. This type of solution is on a tilt, a slight tilt, so that the nutrient will flow with the force of gravity. The system works well because the plant roots absorb more oxygen from the air than from the nutrient solution itself. While the tips of the plant roots become in contact with the nutrient solution, the plant can get more oxygen, which facilitates faster rates of growth. It is very efficient with the, um, in use, use of nutrients. It's a simple setup and exact feeding techi techniques. It is, it, in this system, a small shallow stream of nutrient is recirculated over roots of the plant.
the pump moves the nutrient solution to the higher portion of the system, and the solution moves gradually from, from the upper to the lower end of the, the pipe by gravity. This is a, a drawing of a diagram of how it looks. So as I said, the nutrient pump, it would carry water from the, well, firstly, part A, we have the nutrient tank, which stores the nutrients, right? This tank at the base here. Now from this tank, a pump will then start to submerge in the water, will transport the, the nutrient liquid from the, the reservoir up to the PVC pipe. So at point C, we see the nutrient flows into the growing, growing channel. So this PVC that is tilted at an angle is called the growing channel, where we have the plants being spaced at different at intervals on the pipe. So it's a very thin layer of nutrient liquid in that pipe, and the nutrients are absorbed by the plant roots. Then we have after absorption by the roots, the, the liquid, the unused nutrient liquid then flows back into the reservoir tank. So it's a circulation that takes place. It's recirculated, the nutrient solution, and it is a very efficient method that has a very fast growth rate with, of grow, growing plants. So in assembling the, the system, we have the six, in this case, we have six growing tubes made of six inch PVC. And we, they are placed on a stand as shown here. So it, it is placed on a, a table that is um, built of PVC. And each growing tube has a drain pipe that leads back to the tank. So the tank would be placed below the table. And to get the nutrients to the plants, the water is pushed through the square of the PVC and the manifold, and then gets shot out through the plastic tubes that run inside each of the, the larger tubes. So this is how it is set up you know, for the, the nutrient system. The, the nutrients are mixed in the basin below the, the table, as I showed. We see the person filling water into the, the 50 gallon tank. And the pump is used for, to run for about 30 minutes to get all the nutrients thoroughly mixed. We add the plants to the growing tubes or the, the net cups. And then we, we put the expanded clay pebbles to hold the, the plants in place and prevent insects also from entering into the solution. Expanded clay pebbles are hard, but they are very light, so they don't damage the plant roots. So when the pump is turned on, you, 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 you will, it will be necessary to check twice a day the system depending on water loss due to excessive heat and evaporation. Check the pH and nutrient levels every few days. And because the pump runs full time, you don't need a timer, but make sure the tank doesn't dry out or the pump will burn up. So the tank, the reservoir tank must always have water to pre so that the, the, the pump doesn't burn out. Okay, the, this is the system here. We're using the square channels. And this is a system in Trinidad that is being used at the moment. And it is a short video to show you the setup of this NFT system. So let's look at this, uh, this video, a short video. Hi, good morning. My name is Zeura Slim Ramjatan, and here I am again to give you an update on what is happening with our hydroponic system. Here, as you are seeing, as the previous shot on this video, is our plant. So this is 10 days old. This is Pak Choi, and this is our NFT system. If we take out one of these, before I go to that, I just want to tell you the principles again on this NFT system. 
This is a five rack system, one, two, three, four, five racks. And there we are using the rectangular pipes, the two by four pipes. And we have placed our pack troy eight inches apart. Now, for return, we also use a rectangular pipe so that the pipe that has the pack troy, it will fit in in this and the water would not be exposed to sunlight and it goes back to the tank. Now this is our reservoir here and in our reservoir, you can look at it inside here. This is our reservoir and here is the water and it's all bubbling up because we have air stones in it run by an air pump. We also have, this is how the oxygen is very important for plant roots. If those plant roots did not have oxygen, they have all died and get brown by this. We also have a submersible pump in here, and this submersible pump takes the water and carries up to that pipe on top there. And there's where we have approximately 700 mils of water running through each 10 foot pipe every single minute. So you'll see the water coming out through each pipe now. Every single pipe gets the same amount of water each time. And this is a result of the air feed. This is a 5-5 five -five system um, with all your, with the air pump, the air stones, the submersible pump, the pipes, the fittings, the net cups, the hydrogen. Hydrogen, as you know, is these clay balls here. This is hydrogen. And these are fitted, these are thrown in the net cup. And I'll check out one plant here now and show you how they are growing. If I could get this plant to come out from here, I will get it now. Okay. And this, or what are the color? Now, this doesn't have big roots as yet, but how big this plant is and what the roots here. They're all white, no brown, no black linen. So you can see. And this is the plant here. So this is the result. What are these roots now are all into the um, hydrogen and now they are coming out. And this is what you need. In one week time, this will be all this will be a mass of roots, and this plant will be about this high in one week from now. So if you want to get your hydroponic supplies and you want to get a system like this done for you, let's visit plant doctor. Okay, so we have an idea now of the NFT system. And we see another setup here where you have a single um, layer pipe, PVC pipe placed on some bricks. And this is a, another simple method of, of building it. Tubes have holes for the plants into which they are placed. So we have about eight holes placed in the, the PVC. The plants, the plant roots fall directly in the nutrient solution, and the roots are not completely soaked in water, only the, the end of the roots, the lower part, and the plant roots are suspended into the growing tubes, and the nutrient solution beneath the roots supply the roots with constant supply of nutrients. For approximate estimate, we would say if you have to build it from scratch, it will be like a thousand TT. If you have to buy a kit ready-made, it comes up to about 3,420 TT dollars. So it, the recycling system will give you maximum control over nutrient variables of pH and electrical conductivity. It is widely used in lettuce production. The NFT system gives superior performance because it relies on essential balance of oxygen and nutrient solution in the root zone and contains aluminum, aluminum, stand, aluminum stand, hydroponic UV stable food grade channels of 155 by 70 millimeters, net grow cups and a reservoir tank a submersible pump, feed drainage lines, and nutrients. Hydro channels also available in, in 100 by 50 millimeters and 225 by 80 millimeter profiles. I see there's a question. Um, would, is there a person with, with a question? 
is there someone with a question? Yeah, yeah, Ryan. There's a Ryan talking about the Yes. Raise his hand, so I'm going to allow him to talk, right? Yes. Good afternoon. Yes, Mr. Jagannath. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Is there a question? Okay, I'm not hearing. Is there any question? Okay, let's let's go on. Um, so the NFT hydroponic system, the let us look at this other video here. Okay, so let us look at this video. It's a crack key. No, this is an NFT system. We showing showing the way it is constructed.
Okay, so we saw another nutrient firm technique that, that is how it is set up, the NFT system. So the next system now is the ebb and flow system. This is also known as the flood and drain system and the ebb and flow method periodically floods the tree with the plant's roots and then drains the nutrient solutions back into the reservoir. However, unlike the nutrient film technique, ebb and flow uses a timer to turn on the pump to flood the tree with water and then turn off the pump when it is time to drain. So we see this is the setup where a timer is used to flood the system and then the pump is then turned off when, it is, when the system has to drain the water back out. Ebb and flow systems also called, called flood and drain, which are a less commonly seen system, but they're quite effective and can be the best choice depending on your situation. The ebb and flow hydroponic system also is, is a great system of growing plants. And it is, it is the system functions by flooding the growing area with nutrient solution at specific intervals. The nutrient solution slowly drains back into the reservoir. The pump is hooked to a timer, so the procedure repeats itself at specific intervals so that the plant gets the desired amount of nutrients. The ebb and flow system is ideal for plants that are accustomed to periods of dryness. As the root system grows larger, the plant grows faster as it can absorb more nutrients. This is a diagram of the ebb and flow system. So we have the submerged pump, which will carry the water up into the, the tanks, the PVC area. So the plants would be placed in this upper part where the PVC area, that is the PVC pipe. And then it will exit through the bottom of the PVC back into the tank, the reservoir. The Dutch bucket method, this is now uh, an alternative type of the ebb and flow. It is uh, another variety of ebb and flow method where you, by you have the pump which carries the water again over the plants via an irrigation line. And from when it, it, the irrigation life line will carry water to the plants and then go to an, a, a return line which is at the base of the plant. It, it is outside of the container that the plants are in because the, the buckets are what the plants are placed inside. So the, the return line is what will carry that irrigation from the irrigation line, water from that line to the return line and back into the reservoir. So the Dutch bucket method shown here is an, an, a, ver, a variation of the ebb and flow type, which is a variation of the flood and drain system. So we see this is the Dutch bucket or vari a variation of the ebb and flow where you have these buckets where the plants are placed and, and this system is a variation of the ebb and flow. Several buckets are placed on a bench or floor. Each bucket should contain one plant and the big reservoir which holds the nutrient solution, the, the water is pumped through an irrigation line then dropped into the plants via emitters. The excess solution can return to the reservoir via a drain line or a return line and drain back out into the, the reservoir tank or system. The, this is a drip system. This is another hydroponic type of system. In this system, it, it is a simple operation and it uses a timer to a pump where the, the, pump, the nutrient solution um, passes through a drip line at the base of the plant. Instead of dripping water directly to the roots, the drip lines drop tiny amounts of water onto the plants and the water trickles through the roots and back to the reservoir. The drip systems are common in commercial operations but less common in recreational gardens. And this is because they're simple to operate a large scale on a large scale, but slightly overkill for an, a smaller garden. So regardless, they're a great way of growing plants hydroponically, so that you should also consider. 
This is the system called a drip system. So we have the submerged water pump, which will carry water upwards to the plant via um, emitters. And each emitter is placed in each um, of the, the net cups. So it feeds each individual plant with the emitter and the water goes to the roots. And from the roots, it will, it will um, trickle down into the, the tank that is containing the, um, the net cups. So then from the tank water, it, it overflows into an overflow drain. From the overflow drain, it returns to the, the main um, reservoir tank. So this is the drip system method. Here's another diagram showing the drip system method. So it has one submer submersible water pump. In the aeroponic system, we have this method. It stands out from the other methods because the plants are suspended in air while the, their roots are hanging inside of a large open chamber. There is a timer that controls a pump to spray a mist of nutrient on the roots. This method helps keep roots moist while also providing necessary amount of nutrients. It is the most high tech method out of all the systems. This is how it works, the aeroponic system The, the aeroponic system is similar to the NFT in that the roots are mostly suspended in air. Then the diff but the difference is that in the aeroponic system, this is achieved by misting the root zone. So as we see in the diagram, from the submersible pump, the, you get a stream of water in, in this tube, which will produce mist and that mist then um, provides um, if the evaporated water or, or the mist from the, 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 the nozzles to, to provide water to the, to the um, roots. And that mist contains the nutrient solution, which sprays the roots constantly instead of the, the, a thin, the thin layer of nutrient solution uh, in the case of the NFT. Instead of the thin layer, we have, in this case, a uh, mist that is providing water to the, the base, the, the tips of the roots. We, we see also this, um, air, the air bubble um, also supplied. This is an air pump, which also supplies oxygen in, in this water. So there are two pumps in this system. Then the, the seventh method, I, this is the last method of hydroponics is the Kratky hydroponic system. This method is a passive hydroponic um, technique for growing plants suspended above a reservoir of nutrient rich water. And it is described as the simplest hydroponic method so we have again, so the, the, the net cup would be placed in, in, um, in this, uh, on this um, piece of styrofoam here, and it will be placed over a nutrient solution. And that nutrient solution um, would, would provide water to the tips of the roots. And we have air, both air and oxygen supplying, air and oxygen supplying the roots in the area that is not submerged. And this is called the Krat Kratky system. This could be a tank cover or a styro styrotax, which will hold the plant in place. And it must be uh, an opaque color so that it doesn't get any sunlight coming through that, that will cause algae to, to grow. So this video is the last video in the first half of the presentation, which will describe the crack key system. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. A while back I did a video test. Let me start here. Amen, I wanna know uh, exactly uh, which method works best for me and also uh, 
I learned a lot from conducting these tests. So again, um, uh, there's always going to be something missing. So uh, many people suggest that we do tests multiple times and re repeat the experiment. So this is exactly what we're doing. But uh, instead of using those uh, small one gallon containers like these here that I used in the past video, I'm going to use a five gallon bucket and I'm going to grow three plants in each. So you see that I have those holes already drilled. So there's the other one. So they're exactly the same bucket, same setup and everything. So one, I'm going to add air, which is the DWC, and the other one is going to be the non-circulating cracky hydroponic. So let's go ahead and start our seedlings. I'm going to start uh, eight seedlings and we're going to pick the best and put in both of these. So the lettuce I'm using in this experiment is going to be salad bowl lettuce. I love growing these things. I love eating them and they look gorgeous. So while I'm doing the test, might as well grow something I like. So let's go ahead and take a look at what they look like so you can see and then we'll come back and uh, begin the seedlings. Okay, thought I'll show you what the lettuce look like in the meantime while you wait for the experiment to begin. These are the lettuce. They are absolutely gorgeous. You see these here? I, I just love them. So this is the, uh, the subjects to our experiment. So uh, let's go ahead and put some seeds in the rock wool. Okay, as usual, nothing special. I'm using just regular rock wool, one and a half inch, and I poke holes at the top so I can drop the seeds in. And we are going to put a few seeds per pocket. That way uh, something will sprout and then we'll thin them out when they're ready. And the water I'm using in this uh, bucket or container is just normal water out of my faucet, so nothing special. So let's go ahead and place some seeds in there. Here we are. These are the seeds I gather from my garden. So I'm going to just randomly pick two to three seeds. Okay, some of these may have more than two to three seeds. I, they're just so small, I just grab them randomly. So we'll see what will come out of these. Okay, and then we'll put the lid on top and then we'll put this under a grow light. We'll check back in about maybe two weeks or whenever they're ready. Okay, it has been exactly nine days now and the plants are pretty much ready. Uh, normally I would wait a little bit longer before I put them into the unit, but because I will be busy for the next week, so I thought I'll go ahead and begin the experiment. So as you can see, uh, all of the um, rock wool have uh, lettuce and pretty much around the same size. Some of these have multiple, so we're going to pull them out and leave only one. So we're going to pick one that are most similar to the other. That way we can have sort of like an even uh, plant to do our experiment. So let's go ahead and pull these out. Uh, if you do this gently, you can actually grow the plant somewhere else. And I do have plan to do this. Just gently remove it. And if you have, if you get a little bit of the root down there, they will live. Okay, here we are. We have just uh, eight plants, but all we're going to do is use six. So I'll choose six of the ones that are most uh, closely uh, in the same size. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and begin our experiment. And as always, we're going to have one that will have an air unit and one without. Uh, I'm trying to control as much as possible uh, certain factors. So uh, the amount of nutrients are gonna be the same and the water is going to be the same. So uh, those are the two things that I can control. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so first what we're going to do is uh, place the rock wool into these net cups. So 
let's go ahead and select our plants these are very similar in size And you can see there's some root at the bottom. Uh, when you see root at the bottom like that, that is the best time to uh, start your experiment or start your grow. And then I have two left. I'm going to also grow uh, a few plants next to these experiments just for fun. Okay, what we're going to do first is add nutrients to here. That way when we add our water, it can mix up nicely. And what I'm going to use is the Aero Garden Nutrients because it's very simple and I've done and I've used these before and it works great. So all I'm going to do is add five milliliter, five times for five gallon and then add water and that's it. No pH, no nothing. So that's how we're going to conduct our tests. So for the nutrients, this is a, this is a one teaspoon, which is five milliliter. So I'm just going to add that five times to both buckets. And I'm going to try to make it uh, as even as possible. So one squeeze, and that's one, two, three, That's one bucket, and then here's the other one. Okay, so both uh, buckets have the nutrients in there. So this is gonna be the one with the air stone. So the easiest way for me to do this is to always have a test. So you put the test in there, you fill the water up, and then you make sure that the water touches the bottom of the net cups, and then you're all set. So here's how I'm gonna do it. Okay, and this is water right straight out of my garden, so. You see, when you add water like this, it mixes everything up nicely, so uh, there's no need to mix uh, after the fact. So do it. this is the best way for, uh, that I found to do it. Okay, so now you have your air stone in there, and you can close the lid now, and because we have a little subject here, so you can just fill it up. Okay, we are done with our first bucket. You see the, the water touches up the bottom of the neck cup, it could be slightly above and that is fine. So now, all we have to do is take our plants and then drop it in here. And I'm just randomly picking plants to put in there. Okay, this is the DWC. It's all done and ready to go. Um, eventually, you can also put these pebbles here and uh, this is basically to prevent algae from growing on top of our, the rock wall but you see how small the plant is you can't put too much so I usually wait a little bit longer until the the leaves go above the rock wall and then I would put it around like that so so the next update you will see these pebbles there Okay, so we'll slide this out of the way and then we'll do the next one. So here's the, uh, the cracky one. Put our test in here. This one is also ready, so the water touches the bottom of my neck cup. 
And now we just take our plants and then put it in there. Okay, I have two extras. So what I'm going to do is use the other containers, uh, the smaller ones. That way we have two uh, tests side by side and it's, it's easier for us to, to see how, how they change. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this in their place and then get everything set up and ready to go. Okay, we are ready to begin the experiment. So I have a five gallon there running on DWC and then that one there is cracky. And then I have a one gallon, which we've done the test before. So let's go ahead and do that again. I'm sure a lot of people are very interested. So there are a few factors that I changed. So I use the different nutrients and I did not pH this time. So I guess this is easier to control because it's just really simple. Water and nutrients and everything else is pretty much the same. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look so you can see. Uh, I took a lot of suggestions that people uh, posted in the past. So they suggested that I use an air stone, which I did. So uh, there's an air stone in there. The bubbles is uh, pretty good. I guess it, it, it looks very uh, big because the container is very small. So that's the reason. And then the cracky here is just nothing's happening, no circulation. And then here, this is the cracky method. And there it is, it's very nice and quiet. And then for the DWC, you see there's some bubble action right there. So everything is going great. And these are the air tube that is leading to the air pump there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in place and then I'm gonna put this to maximum output because right now it is on dim. You see, 20% because if you work under these unit, you're going to have to dim it. So uh, any light with a, with a dimming function is ideal. It is one of the best options you can get. Okay, and also most plants don't need full capacity right away. So that's also a good option. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this in their place. Okay, here we are. Everything is all set up and ready to go. So I'm going to sit back, relax, and just watch it. So I will come Right. It's a DWC on this side, cracky on this side, uh, and they are just see. beautiful, and they're looking very much the same, so I really can't tell uh, which one does better. So the, what that means is you don't need to uh, spend the extra money to get a pump and, uh, you know, potentially having to pay more for, uh, you know, electricity just to get the pump working while the cracky is doing about the same. So when you grow lettuce in, inside, in uh, buckets like this, there is really no need for an additional equipment when, um, you know, you can do it just fine without. So that is my conclusion. So now we are going. Right. So we see in the two systems, we have the Kratky method producing the same plant type of plant where you, you, you don't need to have the pump in that case because the, the lettuce was seen to have grown the same in, in the same way in, than when there was uh, the oxygen supplied by the air, air pump and we, 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 we i must uh, take note that we and we have different nutrient solutions that we can use not the one that was mentioned in the video but in trinidad we have nutrient solutions that could be supplied to the water in this case right so there's a question. Is, is there a question? Yeah, Michelle, there's a question from Doreen. I'm just going to unmute her, right? So, uh, right. Yes, good evening. Good evening. I, I can't hear. I think the, 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 you need to unmute the... Um, Okay. Well, when you get when you right. get okay. yes, I, I can hear. Now. Yes, I can hear. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not looking for a certificate. I just want to do my little gardening in my little backyard. 
But the yeah. cup is set up with all the pot and all that jazz. It's just good for me. The one with the bucket. So I, yes. I want to make, I can get the solution to start my thing as soon as possible because I love that one. Yes, so I have on this, uh, uh, the slides coming. All these vegetables or, or leafy vegetables, which you need to plant. So you will see these, the, the types of solutions in the, shortly in the next slides. But don't take them okay. off quickly because I have to write unless it, I see it on YouTube. Y yes, it will be definitely coming up on the YouTube and I will go through slowly so you'll have the time to take notes, right? Okay, so, all right, then I'll write that for now. Okay, thank you okay. very much. Sure, thanks a lot, Doreen. Thanks for the question. Water-based medium, this is what we, we look at, a pH of 0.5 to 5.8 in, in water-based mediums. And this is, uh, we, the certain plants need acidic pH, while others may not need um, acidic pH. So 0.5 to 5.8 pH is what we usually try to use. Lighting, as, I, as they showed you in the previous slide, in the video, there's um, LED lights, which provide um, lighting and the, the LED is known to be efficient compared to other lights because they produce full spectrum of light similar to sunlight. These are some plants which are grown uh, the, the, um, and in the hydroponic methods. Basil is one. It takes three to four weeks to grow basil. Lettuce it takes about eight weeks. Kale takes about seven weeks. Oregano takes five weeks. Spinach takes seven weeks. And these are the formulae of the nutrient solution. I, I will go slowly with it. So for crops such as tomato, hot pepper, sweet pepper, pimento, and melanchan, we use these nutrient solutions. These are the formulae of, of, of the solution which we will have to produce. And it has to contain um, 125 grams of the four by 18 by 38, 50 grams magnesium sulfate, four grams iron chelate, 37.5 grams potassium nitrate, and 100 grams calcium nitrate. Now these, these um, chemicals can be um, obtained in a, a ready-made solution, which can be bought in agro shops. So these, these nutrient solutions, when you go to um, purchase at the agro shop, you will give them the, the formulae as given in this slide, the, ex the exact formulae for that particular type of crop, and they will in turn give you the respective solution, nutrient solution that is equivalent to that formulae. So you just, just take note of the measure, the quantity of the, the particular chemicals in the formulae. And the, uh, the pH, which must be taken, must be between six to seven. And the nutrient concentration or the parts per million is 1,725 to 2,400. So as seen in the video previously, you, you, you fill the bucket or the, the tank by, by until it's about halfway full. You mix the nutrients up, um, separately until all is dissolved in a small container, then pour it into the reservoir in, or in the order described in from one to five. When you fill the reservoir with water up to three quarter way, and then check with the instruments, the P PPM and pH, and match the readings against the table where you have pH and PPM of, of those values. So you make adjustments to water as necessary to, to get the, the respective values and, and we, 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 we use this particular formulae. Okay, so the next formulae we have uh, for the patchoy, lettuce, cabbage, celery, parsley, and sive. So again, we look at the, the, the necessary formulae for the, um, the NPK, which would be 10, 13, 32, 100 grams. 
Then for magnesium sulfate, we use 40 grams per 100 liters. For iron shellate, four grams per 100 liters. Potassium nitrate, 30 grams per 100 liter. And calcium nitrate, 80 grams per 100 liter. So these, you, you use the same system of adding it, mixing it in the cup, a small cup, then pouring it into the reservoir and adding water up to three quarter full. We, we again check for the PPM and pH using the, the equipment and match the readings to the necessary values shown in this table. So for patchoy, we use 5.5 to 7 lettuce, 5.5 to 6.5 pH, and then so on. For the PPM, we try, we must have the, the equivalent values when we check with the equipment. So we, we try to keep consistent with these standard values to get the best um, outcome. The next formula is for the um, patchoy and kale. Again, we have the, the same pH and PPM, 10, 13, 32. And we, we, had, we, we gave the values previously for patchoy and kale in, in the previous slide. So when we're doing indoor hydroponics, we, we, we try to have the proper lighting as seen by the LED lights here. We can do vertical um, tra trays on a vertical stand so we get more efficient use of space. We call that vertical farming. So you get a stack of trays, one, one above the other. And that way we can do it in a, a, a larger way as in this commercial project here. They have as much as 12,000 plants in this one area, in a 5,000 square foot area. Then we have advantages of water versus soil. As we, we said earlier that we have space saving and you can grow it anywhere. There are no, no, no pests and no weeds. And it has easy harvest and there's, it is grown year round when it's indoors. So this system is another NFT shown in this, in this picture. That's the NFT system. We have advantages of space, which is shown here. We can set it up against a wall and that, that saves space because it's grown vertically. And we have advantages of saving water. So you have circulate, recirculation of water, especially seen with the deep water culture, the water is recirculated. And then we have less pest and disease. So we don't have that um, problem with, with um, pesticides, use of pesticides or weedicides. So it is much better for organic um, grow, grow, growing systems. It saves time. So um, you, you, if you're growing outdoors, it means you get, you get to squeeze more harvest cycles before growing season ends. It's grown any time of the year. So you save time there. Um, an advantage again is the, you have total control of the growing conditions. So you, you can set up and create a perfect nutrient mixture on temperature, humidity, and growing schedule. And finally, the last advantage is no weeds. As I said, no weeds because you have no soil in this system. And we have hydroponics methods where you use grow, grow beds or grow boxes and you use tanks containing nutrient solution, which transports the liquid through pi, um, in irrigation lines to the plants in the grow box. So in this system, it is not um, water-based, but it's media-based. So it will be, would use things like sharp sand and it is um, surface irrigation is the system used in this case, drip, surface drip irrigation. So this is the system of the grow box where you have the sharp sand media base being used with the tank and the containing nutrients. This is the, the measurement of your, your grow box. You are using blocks of six inch by eight inch by 16 inch concrete blocks, 26 in total. And you use 
some construction plastic which will cover the 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 grow the, the, the growing medium. The, it has to cover it to prevent um, any um, you it will prevent the uh, it will isolate the rooting medium and present prevent possible sources of soil borne pests and disease from entering into the growing medium. Right, so this, this is how you establish the media-based hydroponic system. And you place, um, you place it one block high, 3.5 meters long by 1.2 meters wide. And it is placed exposed to full sunlight. You can do that. And the trough is, placed, is filled with sharp sand. And you place a tank stand a meter high away from the, the trough, uh, the, the growing, the, um, the growing trough or the grow bed. You cut four pieces of PVC pipe, 3.5 meters long, and those will serve as irrigation lines. And you, you drill holes, 11 holes in each pipe, 35 centimeters apart, using an one eighth drill bit. And the pipes are angled facing, with, with the holes facing sideways at an angle of 45 degrees downwards. So the, the irrigation lines must be angled at 45 degrees and angled downwards. With the, with the holes actually, the holes in each pipe are, are angled downwards facing 40, at 45 degrees. Then you flush the, the PVC pipes, flush it with water to ensure functioning effectively and fill one tank with clean water and the other with the nutrient solution. The nutrient solution containing the 12, 12, 17 of NPK is called blocon, and it has calcium nitrate and magnesium sulfate. So that is placed in the 50, 50 gallon water, water tank and you, you use two tanks. So you have um, one containing the nutrient solution, one containing the water, and it will be recircul recirculated to, to supply nutrients to the plant. So as we finish the first half, I'll just play this video. Hey guys, comparison. my name is Rob from Urban Leaf. And in this video, I'm gonna show you an experiment we ran that compares four of the most popular hydroponic techniques that are used in dozens of commercially available units. We've got some time-lapse videos, pictures, and in the end, we'll go through the data on the plant size, fruit yield, water use, and temperature. If you're new to hydroponics and want to learn a little bit more about the systems you see here and how they work, then I'd recommend also checking out our separate video that goes through all of them in detail. So, in this experiment, we set out to test five different systems, four hydroponic plus one soil-based as a control sample. Firstly, on the left-hand side, we have a drip system. What you can see here are our three different model plants, including cherry tomato, which is a model for flowering fruiting plants, lettuce, a model for leafy greens, and beet, which we use to represent root crops, set up in each of the five different systems. In the drip system, we're using clay pebbles to anchor the plant and delivering the water by a HDPE gardening irrigation system with three emitters. We set this up to deliver water three times per day for 15 minutes each time. Next is the deep water culture, or DWC. In this trial, we are aerating the water with bubbles delivered by an aquarium, tube, and an air stone. In the middle, you can see our aeroponic setup, in which we are using one ultrasonic fogger. These foggers were purchased from a specialty supplier for around $30 each. The fourth setup is our crack key sample. In this tub, we basically just have the still water with nutrients. You'll notice that all the tubs are, are the solid opaque plastic, and the reason is that keeps the light out of the reservoirs, so it reduces the amount of algae growth we experience. Lastly, on the right-hand side, we have soil. We put um, some miracle Grow potting mix into three free-draining containers, aka water bottles with holes in them, to use as a control. I watered it by hand, but truthfully, I may have missed some waterings and let it get too dry every now and then. So all up, we ran this experiment for three months. Some of the limitations and problems we ran into that might skew the results include the plants in the DWC with bubbles died early. 
This wasn't intentional, but as we learned, the system goes through water really, really rapidly. The other limitation is that some of the plants were not given enough time to reach their full potential. For example, the tomato plant in the drip system on the left grew very, very large, but it was slower to flower, and we ended the experiment before it was given time to have all of its flowers produce fruit. Finally, there was an element of human error here. Guilty. Life happens, and I wasn't able to water the soil of the control every day. So what did we learn? We ended up having the most consistent and comparable data for the tomato plants, so we'll use their results for comparison purposes. Firstly, plant weight. The drip system grew the biggest plant by far, but as we mentioned, it was much slower to flower. Unfortunately, because it ran out of water, the deep water culture tomato didn't make it to the end. Next on to yield. The aeroponic fog-based system gave us both the largest and greatest quantity of fruit. Perhaps the most surprising result here is the fact that the crack key was second best. Given the simplicity and low cost of a crack key setup, it really does seem to pack a punch well above its weight. We also recorded the water nutrient solution temperatures for each system. And as a reminder, these were all sitting in the same room and sitting side by side. What you'll notice here is that the aeroponic system was very warm. This is due to the heat emitted by the electronic fogger. Meanwhile, the DWC system with the bubbler was by far the coolest. This is because that constant evaporation of water that we were forcing is an endothermic reaction, meaning it absorbs heat. The other major differences in these systems as they re relate to water use. The DWC with the bubbler consumed the most water by far, um, and that was followed by the drip system. The cracky consumed the least water, but it was really close to the aeroponics. Um, this makes sense because the cracky is passive and it's not really forcing the air out, and with the aeroponics, uh, the vaporized water is able to then condense back into the system, so it kind of recirculates in that sense. So if overall cost and maintenance are not a constraint, you're likely to get the best results from an aeroponic-based system. However, in terms of bang for your buck, ease of setup and use, and the fact there are no moving parts, the cracky method is hard to beat. So I hope this video has been a useful overview. Don't forget to head on over and check Okay, so we saw the comparison of all the various types, and the cracky system seemed to have the edge because the, the, we saw the advanced, the, the various ways in which it it used it was the most efficient use of water, the least amount of, of um, water, the least amount of the least temperature, and um, that is these are things that we use to for for efficiency purposes. So let's go to a break for five minutes, and then we'll just continue going through a bit about the irrigation, drip irrigation, which wouldn't be very long. And so we'll go to a five minute break now. Okay, thank you. Five minutes and we'll be back at, at um, 6.48. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back again, everyone. And we now continue the second half of the presentation today on the drip irrigation system. Okay, we have a drip irrigation system here that is in the open field. Now, this systems, these systems are soil-based systems. So we it is use use of soil is this is the grain medium. And it's an open field here uh, um, of peppers. This is how it is set up where you have um, a water source or a pond. So you will have a, this water source will be, for instance, a surface um, irrigation pond or a, a um, rain fed pond. And it, it will have a pump that which will transfer water from the pond into a, a sand filtering system. Following the sand filter, it will go to a backwash system, to, which will then um, go to the various um, irrigation lines, which will had, go to a main line, which is this main line here, can, with an air valve, and it will then go to the secondary lines or later um, sub, -line, sub main sub main lines. Is this this perpendicular one and then the laterals which are um, perpendicular to the submains. So this is a basic irrigation setup using um, soil. So drip irrigation, uh, we have various material tools and equipment. So as we, we, we saw, uh, those are two and a half inch PV, P, PVC lines that were in the field. So it can be placed to in grow boxes where you have the irrigation lines set up in boxes as shown here. And we can have automatic timers connected as well to these lines, so it can be automated. There are various um, um, materials also which must be added like flexi flexible plastic tubes. That is another type used apart from the PVC that can be placed um, with, with drippers to the plants. We have manual control valves. There are four basic types. Um, we, we use check valves. They are, are one-way check valves that are used to, um, to stop, to block the water from um, going through the pipe. Then you have hydraulically operated control valves. There are two types, the pressure relief and the pressure reducing control valves, we have pressure regulators and water meters so that you can um, measure the, the, the water using these meters, the quantities and so. We have dripper lines, flushing the manifolds, the emitters and end of line removable connectors, filter systems, tensiometers, fertilizer tanks, in that case, you, you 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 will. That's where you may have fertigation, where you you have the nutrients mixed in the water before um, fertilizing the, the the crop. So centrifugal pumps, or the, that is the most um, popular kind of pump used for irrig drip irrigation in the field. Centrifugal pumps are normally used, and electric dosing pumps. Well, that that is if you don't have the diesel or the um, the diesel pumps or gasoline pumps, you use the electrical pumps. Then, so we use a tensiometer, which is used to measure the pressure of water passing through the, the um, root zone of the, the crop. It is designed to measure tension or suction that a plant's roots, roots must exert to extract water from soil. And it is a direct measure of the availability of water to a plant. So measurement of soil moisture is a valuable tool to schedule irrigation. And schedule is based on estimation of crop water use from the reference crop evapotranspiration data. So this is a, a diagram of a tensiometer. The soil moisture measurement is measured with this tensiometer as shown in this short clip. When we install tensiometers, we have several sizes to choose from. 
the principle is to place the tensiometer in the root zone of the crop. We will demonstrate the installation of the tensiometer by installing this one at the 15 centimeter depth. We have a line drawn on the tensiometer to measure the 15 centimeters. Normally, we would fill the tensiometer a day or two in advance. We fill the water column and would allow the, tens the tensiometer to soak in a bucket of water. Install a tensiometer, we normally apply a mud slurry in the bottom of the hole. When we install a tensiometer, we install it in a mud slurry. We have here a hole that we have already dug for our demonstration. We fill a little bit of water to form the mud slurry in the base. And then we place the tensi tensiometer to our line and fill the rest of the hole, packing the soil down to make sure that there is good contact between the tensiometer and the soil. After being in the field for a short while, the tensiometer may produce bubbles that will rise to the top. These have to be removed to maintain a continuous water column. We do this with a small hand pump. We do this with a small hand vacuum pump, which we place over the tensiometer and draw the air bubbles out. See those air bubbles? Let's see if I can see them. Yeah. Can you, can, you, can you force some air in there so you can... No. One goes one you way. have to empty it out and do it again. Ah, screw it. Yeah. Another method of measuring soil water is with the gypsum block. Gypsum blocks measure electrical resistance, which we measure with an electrical meter. We will demonstrate the installation of the gypsum block in our hole prepared at 15 centimeters. It's done the same way as with a tensiometer. A mud slurry is prepared and the gypsum block is forced into the hole to the proper depth. And the hole is filled again making sure that the soil is in good contact with the measuring device. The advantage of the gypsum block is that it measures water content over the entire range of available moisture to the crop. The disadvantage of gypsum blocks are that they must all be calibrated and it's unlikely that any two gypsum blocks will be exactly the same. Like the tensiometer, the gypsum blocks should be prepared for installation by soaking them in water for at least 24 hours prior to installation. As the soil dries, the tension on the water column increases. We have determined for our soils here in Obregón that irrigation should occur when the tensiometer reads 60 centibars at the 45 and 75 centimeter depth. We can also schedule irrigation by using the gypsum block. As the soil dries, the electrical resistance increases. We have determined for our heavy soils here in Obregón that when the electrical resistance at the 45 centimeter depth is about five, we should irrigate we can see that we're getting very close to the time that we should irrigate here in Obregón. Okay, so we see the purpose of the tensiometer and it is, we have the tensiometer placed at three locations um, in, the, um, in the soil at the, the root zone, at the upper part, the middle part and the lower part. 
So it is recommended to use three tensiometers per, per plant station. But we take the, the upper tensiometer placed at the top of the root zone, provides data regarding development of wetted bulb in the soil and indicates when it is time to irrigate. For the middle tensiometer, it is placed at the midpoint of the main fibrous root and um, provides data regarding wetness of soil in the root zone. And it is used to, uh, it, the result, it gives the um, excessive irrigation and water logging of the deeper roots. So it will determine the um, placement too deep though in, in the shallow rooted crop will result in crop being irrigated too late and suffering water stress. So it gives information regards it regarding wetness of the soil in the root zone. The, for the lower tensiometer, it is placed at the bottom of the root zone and serves as a safeguard against excessive irrigation by providing data regarding runoff or deep percolation. So we have the three different types of tensiometers. Now for, we have the irrigation valves. We, these are used in drip irrigation systems and they turn the water flow on and off. Valves come in various sizes and so on. The, the isolation valves are manually operated for systems that require in, infrequent shutoff of the water. So these valves are sited close to the water supply to enable isolating the system for repairs or off season. So this diagram is showing you the, the, the valves. This is um, a valve in yellow color. And then we have a, a backflow valve. Then you have a pressure regulator in blue, followed by a, a filter, which is in green. The black tubing, that's called the drip tubing, and it, is, it has drippers placed or emitters placed 18 inches apart. Control valves, uh, these are valves that turn the water on and off to individual circuits or areas in the yard that are irrigated separately from one another. So we see the, the front um, valves connect here as shown by this white in this white tubing. We have backflow controls and filters. These are also um, found in the irrigation setup. Backflow preventers are essential because drip emitters rest directly on the soil and are potentially very susceptible to water contamination from soil borne diseases. So the backflow preventers prevent backflow of the, the contaminated water into the system. Filters or use to filter water so you don't get sand getting into the system. They are of about 150 to 200 mesh in size. And the, pressure, the high quality filters usually have maximum pressure of 10.3 bars or 150 PSI. Pressure regulators and reducing valves. These are other types of um, parts of the, the drip system. Emitters, well, emitters, uh, uh, those are the, the um, small emitters that give droplets of water to the, each plant. And they are placed 450 millimeters apart. Main and sub-main lines and laterals, as shown in the previous diagram, you, you will have these, these lines, PVC lines or tubing to, to, carry, to transport water to the plants in the field. Then we have drip tubes the hose and hoses. Drip tubes tend to make, be, be made of very thin walled polythene and, and consequently have much lower pressure rating than other parts of the system. It is recommended that these stay above the ground as they can commonly be nibbled by pests and rodents. So the drip tube is, does not exceed 16 meters in length. 
from the point where water enters the tube. We have also air vents in the field, and these vents are installed in systems that are turned off at any time and prevent air from being sucked up into the emitters. And as water pressure falls, the air can be sucked back through the emitters and, and, and train dirt or soil into, the, into the, the emitters. So that is certainly not desirable and the presence of air vents mitigate this problem. The end cap or flush valve shown in this picture, um, unless you want water to, to run out of the end of the drip tube, you'll have to install an end cap and the water flow within the drip system is very slow which can allow sediment to build up even and even allow algae to grow within the pipes. Drip tubes are flushed about once a year and to prevent this problem of algae. Centrifugal pumps, these are the types of pumps used in, in fields. And it um, they will specify the flow rate and pressure head of the pump which can operate in a available suction, at an available suction head. Three-phase power is usually required to operate over 10 horsepower irrigation pumps. And if electricity is not available, alternative power sources are diesel, gasoline, or even solar power may be used. Three types of pumps used could be the horizontal shaft, vertical shaft or vertical shaft submerged centrifugal pumps. These are the basic types. Pump selections are based on four factors. Four factors are flow rate or pump discharge. Then you, in, in cubic meters per hour, for instance, then you have pressure head or the pressure of the pump in, in bars or PSI. Then you have positive suction head and it is limited to 0.8 bars net. And lastly, friction head, which is the head loss caused by the friction between the fluid and the inner, inner walls of the shaft enclosure of the vertical pump. So these are the four main factors of pumps. The drip irrigation calculations, the, basically two types, we, we try to calculate the precipitation rate of the drippers. And normally that will be the, um, the, the, the how, much, how much millimeters per hour must be of water is supplied by the drippers. So in this case, we calculate 0.5 millimeters per hour. So calculating the hourly irrigation rate now, so we will, use these um, values you, uh, um, to obtain the, the quantity in volume per hour per hectare, hectare of land. So this will basically give you uh, that calculation per, per hectare of the, of the land. For drip irrigation also, we calculate the daily water requirement from the pan evaporation which is as, um, in Trinidad with our um, type of um, rainfall with, during the, the type of the quantity of rainfall in Trinidad, we use if, if pan evaporation of five millimeters per day and the crop coefficient of 0.75, which is just a constant value used and the daily water requirement would be the two values multiplied to give 3.75 millimeters per day. So when we, in the um, example of the before to calculate the, the volume per, per hectare per day, you will multiply the daily water requirements times the hectare um, and you will get 37.5 cubic meters per hectare per day. Now we, we also calculate required irrigation duration and the duration would be cal calculated in this way. Um, we have a, a hourly irrigation rate, which was calculated in the previous example, 5.5 meters cubed per hectare per hour. 
so that the, the irrigation time can be calculated using the daily water requirements divided by the hourly irrigation rate. So the daily water requirements, which was 37.5 cubic meters per hectare per day, which we, we divide that by the hourly irrigation rate of 5.5 meters cubed per hectare per hour. And that gives us a value of 6.8 hours. So that will be the time required to irrigate the crop using the, the, um, the necessary standards for pan evaporation crop coefficients. Calculating maximum irrigation times the daily hours per shift times the number of shifts divided by the daily irrigation water requirements. When we calculate those values, we get a value of 13 hectares as the maximum irrigation area. So the, these, this table gives you the values that have been um, used to calculate those, those values, dripper flow rates of 0.5 liter per hour, distance between drippers 0.5 meter, distance between dripper lines 1.8 meter, hourly irrigation 0.55 millimeters per hour, daily return, which is the hourly irrigation rate, which is 3.75 millimeters per day, and the daily hours per shift as 6.82 hours, which was previously calculated, and the possible number of shifts per, per in 24 hours would be two, and the pump discharge works calculates to be 36 cubic meters per hour. So this is just an example of the type of calculations that are done in an irrigation setup. For fertigation, this is how we apply the nutrient solution to our irrigation water. And fertigation is a method of um, fertilizer application, which in, is incorporated within irrigation water by the drip system. And in this system, fertilizer solution is distributed evenly in irrigation. The availability of nutrients is very high, therefore efficiency is more. And in the method, the liquid fertilizer as well as water soluble fertilizers are used. By this method, fertilizer use efficiency is increased from 80% to 90%. The, the, percent, the fertilizer use efficiencies, when we compare soil application, where you directly spray fertilizer to the soil, as compared to fertigation, we see the drastic difference with nitrogen of from 30% to 95% efficiency foot, with foot, um, in fertigation. For phosphorus, it is an increase again from 20% of with soil application to 45% using fertigation methods. And for potassium, we see an increase of efficiency of from 50% to 80% using the fertigation method. And these are some um, fertigation tanks where the, the liquid nutrients are mixed in these tanks. And then we have the lines that will then um, use in pumps that will transport the, the nutrient solution into these pipelines and manifolds. So then it will go to the field. So basically we have seen all the techniques used for the hydroponics, as well as the um, drip irrigation system. And I hope it, it, it shed some light as to the various methods that can be used and the, the various ways that we can be, use water in a most efficient way so that we get at least the least um, water loss when we, we try to irrigate plants and crops. So, if, if anyone would like to ask any questions, please feel free. So we, we, we know that the, the NFT system is very, very popular in Trinidad, as you would have seen in the video um, of, of the um, NFT system used in, in South Trinidad. And we have the, the um, deep water um, culture system 
which when compared to the the um, the Kratky system, we saw in the video that the the water system had to use pumps, whereas the Kratky system but there was no need for pumps, so there was much more economical and it is an, a much more popular, a simple system to use for domestic use when we want to use hydroponic systems um, home at home. So the, the outdoor systems, we would use the drip irrigation method when we use in outdoor fields, so we don't um, use the, the water-based medium in that case. So again, thank you again for joining me today for the training. If there's any yes, I have, We have a question from Nadine. Yes, uh, good evening. Good evening, I, I can't hear. Is You might need to mute the, to unmute. I'm still seeing it muted. A pleasant, a pleasant good night to everyone. Yes. Yes, I'm inquiring. Um, the recording of this um, session, would it be emailed to us um, who were in attendance or not? Well, the, the system that they will be using is they will put all the videos on the, the YouTube channel for the, for the Credit Union um, website so that if you will eventually see all these recordings on the YouTube channel for the credit union. However, if you need to have copies of anything, you can just email the um, email address michelleshah.shah at pscutt.com and we will try and provide you with copies of this presentation. Appreciate it. You can just email uh, at the address. Videos will be on the YouTube channel, so everyone will have access to the videos. So, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much, Nadine. So, if anyone has further questions, please feel free, and you can contact any of the branches listed for further information, or if you or, or, or email the address michelle.shah at pscutt.com. So thank you very much, everyone. And I wish you a safe um, time during these COVID times with our new restrictions as mentioned today. And I wish you all the best and good evening. Thank you.